Hey everybody, Dr. G here, ready for episode two of Old Bones, the Wonder Horse. If you remember, in chapter one, we learned a little bit about this horse that people were making fun of. Just a little bony thing, they called him Old Bones. And he had an operation, and he was a little lame. But there's somebody, a Mr. McDaniel, who thinks this horse might have potential. Let's see what happens. When Henry McDaniel left Old Bones, there were two men he had to see. The first was his boss, Mr. Kilmer, the man who owned Sunbriar. That's the horse that they think will win the Kentucky Derby. Mr. Kilmer was a man of great wealth. He could have almost anything that money could buy. Right now, the thing he wanted most in the world was to see Sunbriar win the Kentucky Derby. Money could not buy that, but it could help. Mr. Kilmer had already spent a great deal of money to make his wish come true. He had paid $6,000 for Sunbriar when the horse was one year old. In the two years that followed, he had spent many thousands more to give the colt the best of care, the finest training. He was as sure as a man could be that Sunbriar would win the Kentucky Derby. Mr. McDaniel admired Sunbriar too. The colt was one of the fastest and handsomest thoroughbreds he had ever trained. It was his dream, too, to see Sunbriar win the derby. But Mr. McDaniel was an honest man. He was so honest, he sometimes seemed tough. He loved horses, and he knew horses. He had been born on a racetrack. He could not remember when he had not worked with horses. His father, who had owned and trained thoroughbreds, had taught him how to handle them from the time Henry could walk. When Henry McDaniel looked at a horse, he looked without prejudice. That's a big word. You know what that means? Without prejudice. Look it up. That's a good one. He did not see what he wished to see or what he hoped to see. He saw what he saw, and he saw truly. Now he saw that Sunbriar was not training as well as he should. Mr. McDaniel went to Mr. Kilmer. He said, sir, I don't want to upset you, but I think you should know that Sunbriar isn't doing his best in training. When we exercise him, he doesn't run as fast as he should. I think he needs a workhorse. If he had a workhorse running with him, I believe he'd run better. Who do you think he's going to try and get? to help Sunbriar with his workouts. Hmm, let's read on and find out. Mr. Kilmer said, if you need a workhorse to bring Sunbriar up to top condition, by all means get one. You should be able to get a workhorse for six or seven hundred dollars. Mr. McDaniel winced. He knew he could not buy the workhorse he had in mind for seven hundred dollars. He said, uh, sir, I think we need a rather special workhorse, Mr. Kilmer said. Mr. Kilmer, Sunbriar is a fast colt. The workhorse will have to have speed, too. He will have to set a fast pace for Sunbriar, or the workouts will be useless. Naturally, Mr. Kilmer sounded impatient. Also, Mr. McDaniel said, we need an animal that is quiet and well-mannered. Sunbriar is very high strung and excitable. The workhorse must have a calm disposition. Of course, of course, just get one. I still say you can find such an animal for around $700. However, if you can't, well, do your best, but get what Sunbriar needs. I want to win the Derby. There was no use arguing. Mr. Kilmer was already saying goodbye to the trainer. Next, Mr. McDaniel went to see Mr. Cal Millam exterminator's owner. Remember, exterminator is the real name for old bones. He told Mr. Millam, honestly, that he was interested in buying old bones as a workhorse for Sunbriar. What was the price? Mr. Millam frowned. I'm not anxious to sell him. I've always felt he would race well one day. Now you want him for a workhorse? Yes, a workhorse for Sunbriar. There was an uncomfortable silence. Then Mr. McDaniel said, he hasn't made much of a record as a racehorse. That is true, Mr. Millam said, but I thought enough of him 
even so, to nominate him for this year's Kentucky Derby. Mr. McDaniel smiled. That doesn't mean much. 69 horses were nominated for this year's Derby, and only 10 are scheduled to run. He hasn't raced all year. Mr. Millam said, well, anyhow, I wouldn't sell him cheap. I wouldn't sell him for less than twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000. Mr. McDaniel swallowed hard. He pushed the thought of Mr. Kilmer's $700 out of his mind. He said, I couldn't go that high. 9000 maybe. No, I wouldn't take less than twelve. So they went back and forth. Mr. McDaniel said, we have two fillies I could add to the cash price. They're worth at least 500 each. Mr. Millam said, look here, I'm not eager to sell them. Since what you want is a workhorse, surely you could find another animal for much, much less money than I'm asking. Mr. McDaniel shook his head. He couldn't explain why it was so important that he have this horse and no other. But throughout their bargaining, he could see the horse, big, patient, and wise, the fine head, the eyes that almost talked, the soft muzzle gently nudging his arm. This was the horse he must have. How about 11,000 in cash and the two fillies? Back and forth they talked. When Henry McDaniel left Mr. Millam's house, Exterminator's new owner was Mr. Willis Sharp Kilmer. Although as yet, Mr. Kilmer didn't know it. Remember, he said, I don't really want you to go more than 700. This guy's asking for a lot more than that. Here's a picture. It even says exterminator, but then underneath old bones. But he looks at him and he just he thinks there's something special about that horse. Before breaking the news to Mr. Kilmer, Henry McDaniel went out to the barns to see the horse he had just bought. Old bones was in his stall. He knew McDaniel. He thrust his head toward the man and whinnied a greeting. <laughs> it was early afternoon. In the distance, a bugle sounded boots and saddles. It was time for the first race at the Lexington track. At that sound, Old Bones raised his head sharply. His nostrils quivered. And for a moment, he forgot the man standing there. Seems like Old Bones gets excited whenever he hears that trumpet play. McDaniel spoke. Oh, so you know what that tune means, don't you? Poor fellow. So few races and none since last fall. But you still remember. You still want to go, don't you? The bugle call was over and Bones put his head down for his friend to pet. McDaniel's voice was gentle. I hope you'll forgive me for what I'm doing to you buying you for a workhorse. But trust me, fella, we'll see. Meantime, we've got to get Sunbriar in peak condition for the Derby. That's our job now. We can't think of anything but Sunbriar now. Do you understand? Mr. Kilmer was remarkably calm when Henry McDaniel told him about the workhorse. He said, but that's more than 15 times what I told you to pay. Yes, yes, I know, but I did my best. And you told me to get what Sunbriar needed. I think the workhorse is worth what I paid for him. Well, you're the trainer. You think he'll really be able to keep Sunbriar on his toes? Yes, I do. All right, Henry, Mr. Kilmer smiled. Anything for Sunbriar. The next day, Sunbriar and his new workhorse, Old Bones, traveled to Louisville. There, two weeks later, at Churchill Downs, the Kentucky Derby would be run. They've only got two weeks to get ready for the Kentucky Derby. When the horse van drew up to the barns at Churchill Downs, a group of men waited, watching. Word had got around that the beautiful Sunbriar was arriving. Everyone wanted to see the thoroughbred that was probably going to win the Kentucky Derby. Dun, dun, dun. Nobody noticed Old Bones when he walked from the van, except McDaniel. He gave the horse an, an affectionate pat and watched while a groom led him to the barn. But when the door of the van opened and Sunbriar stepped out, admiring bursts of sound came from the crowd. From here, indeed, was a prince among colts. The creature, 
arched his beautiful neck and tossed his head back, his eyes brilliant on the crowd. He danced back a few sh steps, shied and reared high. Every movement was one of exquisite grace. And when he finally allowed the groom to lead him away, he walked as if to music. In the barn, Mr. Kilmer waited. He looked anxiously at Sunbriar. He's all right. Didn't get too nervous on the ride over, did he? He's fine, Daniel assured him. Mr. Kilmer looked at the other horse that had been let in. My word, Henry, is that ugly thing the workhorse you paid all that money for? Henry McDaniel nodded. The horse must have hypnotized you, Kilmer growled. But at once his eyes were back on Sunbriar, and nothing could spoil the joy he felt when he looked at that beautiful animal. Now when he spoke, his voice was happy. You know, Henry, the dream of every man who owns a racing stable is to see a horse of his run in the Kentucky Derby. This year, for the first time, that dream will come true for me. He smiled. More than that, I think we'll win it. I don't believe Sunbriar can fail. And that brings us to the end of episode two. What do you think is going to happen in episode three? Talk to your parents, talk to your brother or sister, and we'll see if your prediction's correct. Have a great night. Bye-bye.